Thank you. Deb has made a grave mistake. She has invited me to speak. <laughs> it's good to be here. I'm married into the Downer family who lived west of Stowe on the way to Smuggler's Notch. This is the family who, and some of them, went west and founded the city of Downer's whatever in Illinois. Downers Grove in Illinois. So as I was courting my later wife, the family invited me to come along to Vermont. Seems as though my late wife's grandfather, John Downer, was a student in that very early academic field of study at UVM called electrical engineering. And he got a job with General Electric in Schenectady, New York. His brother, Harry, stayed on the farm. And they bought adjoining properties on Lake Hortonia, Little Lake, in the town of Hubbardton. These have been hand-me-down properties ever since. And I've been coming to Vermont ever since our marriage in 1961. And there's this strange phenomenon. We, we, we Pennsylvanians keep coming to Vermont and leaving hard-earned Pennsylvania dollars in Vermont every summer. <laughs> I won't stand here and do this, I, but I could for an hour talking with you about my late departed friend, John Weaver. I first met John either summer of 1957 or 1958. He was a student, an organ major, at Curtis Institute in Philadelphia, and I was a student in music education at a small liberal arts college in the Lebanon Valley of Pennsylvania, Lebanon Valley College. Uh, but we have maintained a contact for all these years, and as I have said to a number of people, I've never been in this church until yesterday to come to practice. But John is very present to me in my, my recollection, uh, and I honor his memory greatly. The organ is a quite worthy instrument. It, it is suffering a couple of birthing pains right now, and we, we have figured out how to avoid those problems for the time being. But this is a very worthy instrument, and I hope that you folks maybe with some frequency, can have people in to play concerts on this organ. Now, uh, it, it is worthy of this kind of thing. And I must assume that there are not many such organs around this territory of Vermont uh, that can do this. So it, it's a great pleasure to be here in, in all kinds of ways. People have asked me to play, and this discussion has finally yielded my plan to play two items, the first of which is to demonstrate to you the extent to which the organ is a worthy instrument. One of the late mature works of Johann Sebastian Bach, a prelate and fugue, what the Brits called the great prelate and fugue in B minor. Now, those of you who know the Brandenburg Concerti of Bach are accustomed to hearing Bach's system with the orchestra of having the whole orchestra play now and then a small group of players to play then and back and forth it goes. We music history professors refer to this as the concerto grosso principle of the large group and the small group. And this organ demonstrates this absolutely well. So what we'll hear is the large group of the orchestra played in the bottom manual, the so-called great manual, and the solo instrument group transferred to the organ of the upper manual, the so-called swell manual, which is a kind of a thinner sound and very much on purpose. This is remarkable music. This is Bach in, in really a rather spiritual moment with music. Uh, there is nothing flip about this. It is great music, 
and let me sit, stop talking, sit down and play for you. <laughs> One more thing. I'm dead to this handsome young man over here who's gonna turn pages for me. <laughs> young.
second hymn we sang this morning is the work of Paul Gerhardt, 17th century German pastor and hymn writer. Most of us probably do not speak much German. I have this strange experience of being a Pennsylvania Dutchman. Aber ich kann Deutsch nicht gut. What we sang this morning, however, is a translation of Paul Gerhardt's text done by John Wesley, who was very skilled in German and is probably one of the five important translators ever of German chorales into English language. When you, now most of you have probably studied a foreign language of some sort or another, and you know the process of taking the words from this language and putting them into that language and rearranging the word order according to that language, and that's what you do. When you translate hymnody, there is another whole bag of concerns. You're gonna sing this hymnody, and therefore you have a given number of poetic feet in each verse line of the hymn text and of the music. So when you translate, you have to translate into something where the poetic feet match what the original text writer did. Furthermore, poetry, as you know, deals sometimes with manner of expression, which is something more than just logical thinking. So, you, so there's a, a kind of a picture of words sometimes, and you look for the same sort of picture in the language to which you are translating. I think, for example, of that great Lutheran chorale, which in stanza five of six stanzas, has the congregation singing, sing it, spring it, Sing it is sing it in English, but spring it would mean jump. But in poetic German, that's not at all what you're talking about. It means to be ecstatic. I say this to indicate that when you transcribe music from one performance medium to another, you have the challenge, an interesting challenge, a good challenge, of taking the original composer's ideas and feelings, as well as melodies and harmonies, recasting those into whatever you're going to do, in this case, for the organ. I would argue that probably the greatest person ever to do transcriptions in the history of the world was the 19th century pianist Franz Liszt, who took many pieces of music written for something else and made piano pieces out of them. And by the time he was done, he had genuine piano music. When our good friend John died on the 1st of February, I was struck by his having been here and by the Bagley March and decided I would like to do this in John's memory. It's been a labor of love. Um, I'm an old guy. I don't deal very well with the computer. Indeed, I need a sign on my computer that says, this is a device sent from God to humiliate me. <laughs> so I got somebody who is skilled with the finale program on music to do my printing for me. And this march went through five drafts until I finally decided, I think this is what I want. And there, there are a couple of interesting things that come by here. Now this, this as you understand, Bagley's march is for a small military band. The basis of which is a bass drummer and a back time side drummer, if you were a snare drummer. And you have a lot of
And the only way that I can understand to convert that to the organ is to write what we call in organ music double pedals. Rather than having a single line of activity going on, two lines, one for the left foot, one for the right foot, and the left foot stomping on the keys and the right foot tapping off gently on the key to create the effect of the bass drum and the side drum. Finally, you can't get all this. Those of you who know this march well, and I assume that some of you do, you should. It's a great march. Indeed, when somebody once asked John Philip Sousa to name his four favorite marches, he named three of his own and the Bagley March. This is high praise for this guy who grew up in Crassbury. But you can't do it all on the organ short of having a second organist playing along with you. So that in, in a couple cases, you are likely to miss, for example, a certain piccolo part. But for the most part, this is there. And the objective here is to write, to rewrite this music as though Bagley had been himself a skilled organist, understood the instrument, understood the stops, and had written it for the organ instead of for military band. When you do this, there is always something wrong. Because it is not what Bagley really had in mind. Having said that, this is in my good friend John's memory. And as I have said so many times there, and it's been striking, John is terribly conspicuous to me in his absence. I, we, I will miss him till my own dying day. Let's see what we can do to make this organ sound like a Bagley March. <laughs> <laughs>